Welcome back. I've got a lovely experiment to show you today. What we're going to be looking at is the stroboscope, its uses and two reasons why it can be incredibly dangerous. So let's kick off first with one of the dangers. And what I want to say now is really important. Uh, if you're someone who knows that they're adversely affected by flashing lights, or stroboscopes, uh, in some people it can bring on epilepsy, please don't watch this video any further. I wouldn't want to uh, bring on any harmful effects at all. I've got plenty of other videos which are more suitable, but watching something with flashing is clearly not going to be a good idea. So I've got a Xenon flash tube stroboscope here and I'll just turn it on and you might notice from the uh, camera shot that it's flashing very, very rapidly. But if I turn the frequency down, okay, you can see the pulses of light that it's giving. And it's giving very, very short pulses of light. But what we can do is we can change the frequency at which those pulses happen. And what we're going to do is we're going to shine them on a rotating object. So what I've got here is a little motor with a fan on it. It's rather pompously called a wind generator, but you know, it's just a little uh, set of fan blades on a little motor. And I've got it connected to a low voltage power supply. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shine the strobe light on this and see what effects we get when we flash light on it in a darkened room. So I've moved the camera now, so we've got a close-up of the little fan blades on the front of the motor. And what I've done is I've coloured in one of the blades with stripes and one completely black, so you can tell which blade is which. And what we're going to do now is spin the motor up and flash the stroboscope on the rotating motor and see what we get. So I've turned the motor on and you can see the fan blades whizzing around here. And what I'm going to do now is turn the stroboscope on. And you'll notice something very strange. It appears as if the blades are almost stationary. I'll just adjust the stroboscope slightly. And if I get it just right, it appears that the blades aren't turning at all. And that can be extremely dangerous if you've got a very fast rotating and sharp or heavy object. So imagine you've got a lathe or something like that going around very rapidly and you've got some stroboscopic effects in the room. One of the common ones is the fluorescent tubes flashing very rapidly. And if they flash at just the right frequency, you can get this effect where the uh, lathe chuck or the piece in the lathe appears stationary and you could run the risk of putting your hands in it. Now, I'm not really at risk here with this little fan, but this is clearly moving. OK, but the strobe can have the effect of pretty much freezing it completely. I'll need to explain why you see um, all of the blades uh, with their little stripy flashes on in a minute. But what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at what happens when we change the frequency of the flashing light. So there's our fan spinning around like mad, though on the image it looks as if it's almost stationary. And what I'll do is I'll reduce the frequency of the light flashing on it. And you'll see it appears to rotate anti-clockwise. And I'll now increase the frequency. And it rotates anti-clockwise slower and slower and slower. And I'll get it so it's almost stationary. And now I'll keep increasing the frequency of the flashes of the light. And now it appears to rotate clockwise. So this is clearly not what's happening with the fan, but it's a weird effect you get when you strobe an object with a strobe light or a flashing light source. So what I'll do now is I'll go right down in frequency. So I'll go lower and lower and lower. You can see the camera struggles a bit with this, but let's not worry too much about that. If I get it just right, the fan's almost stationary in the image, but do you notice there appear to be two blades that are stripy? Let's go down lower in frequency.
And it's all a bit of a blur again. And the camera struggles. But if we get it just right, the camera's making a bit of a mess of this, but you'll notice that it appears stationary again. And we get one blade that looks stripy and one blade that looks coloured in. So it's as if we've completely frozen it. But if I turn the strobe off, it's still spinning freely as it was before. So you might have seen this effect before. You sometimes see it on old Western movies and things like that, that sometimes you see the carriages going forwards and the wheels on the carriages going ever so slowly backwards. I've actually seen this effect when driving on the motorway at night, and I, I think it's the effect of the flashing lights um, over the cars, on top of the cars um, on the motorway, but it may actually be the flashing of some LED headlights acting in a kind of strobing way on the wheels that are turning very quickly. So depending on the frequency of the flashing light depends on whether the object appears to spin fast, slowly in one direction, stop, or spins in the other direction. And there are some specific frequencies that you noticed where we can actually freeze the object. I'll go right down and make it look like it wasn't spinning at all. That's the very low frequency with this one. There it is about there. I think the camera's struggling with that, but there we go. So it looks like I've never even turned the motor on. The proof I've turned the motor on, of course, is if I now turn the motor off, I think the frequency of the motor will change and it'll all get out of sync. And now I put my finger on here. The motor has genuinely stopped. So now for a quick explanation, and it's not too difficult to explain. So um, the best way to imagine this is to imagine these stripy blades here. And if you're in the dark, they can rotate and you won't see anything. Uh, they'll be completely dark, and that's obvious, of course. But if we have the strobe flashing at exactly the same frequency as this is going round, so let's say this is going round 10 times a second and the strobe is flashing 10 times a second, what will happen is it will light this up then it'll go dark, this will rotate one turn, it will light it up, it'll go dark, it will light it up, it will go dark, and so the fan will appear completely stationary. It'll go flash, dark, flash, dark, and so you only ever see the fan blade in that one position because the frequency of the motor is exactly the same as the light from the strobe. But now let's try and explain why you saw the stripy blade twice sometimes. Well, if that's the case, the strobe must be going flash, 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 flash. So in other words, it's flashing when the blade's up here and also down there. So the strobe must be flashing at twice the frequency of the rotating object. And this is one of the wonderful uses for strobe lights. That, if you know what frequency the strobe's flashing at, and you see how many times you see the same blade, then if you see the same blade once, you divide the frequency of the strobe by one, and uh, that gives you the frequency of rotation. If you see the blade twice, then you look at the frequency of the strobe and you divide it by two. So that gives you the uh, frequency that the motor's going around. And if you think about it, one, two, three, four blades here. If you see the blade in one, two, three, four positions, then the strobe frequency must be four times the frequency that this is going around. So it's a very good way of getting the rotational frequency of an object that's going too fast to see with your eye. But now let's try and solve the mystery of carriage wheels that go backwards and why the fan looked as if it was going backwards sometimes. So imagine the fan is rotating this way. So that's anti-clockwise. But what if we flash now and go dark? Flash now and go dark. Flash now and go dark. Flash now and go dark. Do you see that the black blade started here then you saw it there, then you saw it there, then you saw it there. It's because we've got the strobe frequency out of sync with the frequency of the rotation. I'll just show you that again. Um, so there we go. We flash there, the blade uh, continues round, we then flash there, the blade continues round, we then flash there, the blade continues round, and then we flash here. So the blade's going that way, but the picture of it seems to go in the opposite direction. 
So I hope you enjoyed that video about the stroboscope and you understand a bit more about what it does now and how it works and how it could in some situations be dangerous. Anyway, I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.